Welcome to The Road Reflected with Nicole Wakeland. Automotive from the lighter side. That means cars, but also cookies, coffee, and pie. Up first, what's Nicole behind the wheel of this week? Okay, guys, before I get into what I'm driving this week, I have a special guest co-host. I want to welcome Lauren Fix. Lauren, welcome. Well, thanks for having me, Nicole. So tell everybody a little bit about you, Lauren. Oh, I've been in the auto industry my whole life. Uh, my father worked for the big three automakers, so I was always in the garage helping him. And as I started getting old enough to drive, I started racing cars. So we now race cars, restore cars. My husband is a professional racer. That's not what we do for a living, thank God. Because uh, <laughs> it's really hard to make money. You know, you make a million dollars in racing, start with three million. Exactly. So yeah, there's it's <laughs> it's basically a big money spend. Um, and so uh, we've been racing and we restore cars. We work in the auto industry. We make tubing products for automotive aftermarket and restorations. And I've been past president of the North American Car and Truck of the Year. And you are a member, future president, I think. I know, maybe. maybe future president, current secretary. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah so. and then World Car of the Year juror. And uh, I write for a lot of different things. You could see me on the Weather Channel. You could see me on Fox, CNN. I'm on everything. Talking cars. So Lauren is everywhere talking cars. So the first car that we're going to talk about is one that is currently still parked in my driveway. It's the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLE SUV. And this year it gets a little bit of a refresh. It looks a little bit different. They've added a plug-in hybrid to it. It gets some new features. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Monroe Moment. Okay, so the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLE 450, three liter, six cylinder, mild hybrid engine is the one that's in that one, 375 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, priced at $69,500. Lauren, would you buy one? Um, I like the Mercedes. I just think if you're going to lease it, it's your best choice because more technology, more goodies, all the... The Mercedes-Benz user experience known as M-Bucks. I don't know who comes up with that these three and four It makes me think of Daddy acronyms. Warbucks. Does it make you think no. of Daddy Warbucks? For, that's what I think of every yeah. time I see M-Bucks. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I love all the technology, but let's let's be honest with ourselves. Once you reach that 50, 60,000 mile range and things don't work, you go, oh, I'll just go to the dealer. Well, you're outside the warranty and then that falls on you. And so these type of really cool high-tech cars are fabulous for leasing. Uh, I own I own cars for, from the '60s and all the way up to close to current. Well, actually, I do. I have a I have a Bronco Raptor, but I won't mm -hmm. keep it for tons of miles for the same reason. Technology, mm -mm, Trade it gets over, expensive. I know. And this is loaded with all sorts of tech, and they, they have the new powertrain. They've got, uh, they added fancy screens even. So you've got like a 12.3 inch instrument cluster and touchscreen, which looks really cool and has it that does. M bucks. Um, uh, but I, have you ever played around with a Hey Mercedes, the voice assistant? Yes. Do you know that if you say, Hey Mercedes, tell me a joke, she could tell you a joke or she could say, My engineers were German and they don't have a sense of humor. She it's, does not I mean, say that. Does she really? Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah, uh -huh. you can also ask her to tell you a story. You can say, Hey Mercedes, tell me a story and sometimes it's really short like she'll be like once upon a time the end and other times she'll go into this whole like like brief version of cinderella or the you know snow white it's really good you have to ask her each time so it changes now after the podcast i'm gonna be running out to the car like hold on a second honey i gotta run out and i gotta, you gotta record Mercedes it tell me a story Su yeah. <laughs> super tiktok i mean because i've had it do things and it's like oh well that was interesting you know huh. and other times other times she just will blow you off it depends like i said i don't know if it depends on the speed you're driving or if it depends on where you're driving or if you're parked at a traffic light oh like whether but, she'll decide to get all sorts of verbose or give you a two-second answer like you're right. on the highway i should not be talking to you right now <laughs> maybe yeah well you know it's all about safety, safety it's all about safety safety, safety first yeah. uh so i like this this is a fun car to drive i mean it's got plenty of horsepower it goes it's oh, not yeah. like a sports car but it's it good looking. goes and it looks good. And I like they changed the front end. Have you seen the new grill on this? They yeah. it's like not significantly different. They kind of tweaked it. I like well, it. Well, you know what? Look how big the logos are. They get bigger and bigger. It's a little war of who's got the bigger logo on the front of every car. And it is you huge. Know why. Like the Mercedes is like, there's no doubt what's behind me. It is a Mercedes. <laughs> and it's illuminated just yes. to remind you. Just so but, you, know, you don't miss it. They're doing that. Yeah, yeah, they're doing that for a reason, believe it or not. The reason for the larger logos is they hide all their safety features behind it. Right. The cameras and everything. But they're getting so big, they're like dinner dishes. It's yeah, like... 
Really? It's, it's like, you know, it's funny. They got rid of hood ornaments because hood, or, hood ornaments weren't safe. There was a safety issue. And, you, and so those are gone. And they had right. tiny little badges on the front. They're like, wait, we can just kind of turn these. So they're actually bigger than hood ornaments once were. Attract yep. even more attention and announce our brand like a giant billboard as you go down the highway. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's way over the top. So one of the things about this, this is technically it comes standard with two rows, which is the one that I have. But there's a third row available for this. Have you ever seen it with a third row, Lauren? Yes. It's extremely tight. You would that, get a small child back there. No adult's going to want to sit in that third row. If you're going to go three row, you go to the S class. And then, you're, you know, the GLS is a beautiful vehicle. Um, but or you could, you know, there's all kinds. Anything AMG always excites me anyhow. So, yeah, those are really fun. Yeah, I looked at this and like the second row in this looks great. I'm like, OK, I could sit back here for a road trip. But I just looked behind it, <laughs> like glancing into that cargo area. I'm thinking I wouldn't want to sit back in whatever was required to make a third row in this. It just no, looks too it's tiny. tight. And getting back there, challenging. Yeah, it would be like you'd have to be a little contortionist to fit behind the second row to get into the third row. Even if you put kids back there, like if you had to buckle kids in, it's hard enough oh. to buckle kids into the second row of an SUV when they're squirmy. I can't even imagine trying to buckle them into the third row as you're half hanging out of the car. That would not be yeah. fun. And I don't think there's any child safety seats back there. Typically in those tight third rows, they don't. So that means if you've got yeah. little, little ones like my daughter has, then you're, you got two seats. That's yeah. it. Outboard, yeah. outboard second row. So if you've got you kids in child safety seats or booster seats and you don't want to use the belt, you probably need to go to an S class. Yeah. Uh, I does, it does look Mercedes inside though. I mean, my, the one I have is like just loaded with this really dark brown leather and cool. there's wood on the dashboard and there's wood on the center console. So you open it up and it feels, although someone said to me, and now I can't unsee this. He said, it looks really upscale. He's like, but all that brown makes me think of a 1970s living room. Oh, with the with the paneling on the wall. Right, exactly. Oh that, my gosh. I think right? my parents had that. Their whole family room was like paneling and green shag carpeting. That was Exactly. The only so there's no green shag carpet. I have to give Mercedes credit. They did not go so far as to give Thank a green God. shag carpet. But it's no yellow. No yeah. yellow. It's just these beautiful browns and like it's it's very rich and gorgeous and it it's very, you know, the ride is smooth. It feels everything like you want a luxury car, but I'm like, now it feels like a 1970s living room, and that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> okay, everyone, if you like what you're hearing, then go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe either on YouTube or on your favorite podcatcher. So the second thing that we have to talk about, Lauren, is something you and I both went to see together. Uh, we went to see all these. There were three new special edition Toyota GRs, basically. Right. So you should tell people what GR stands for. I think that yeah, confuses it's, people. GR stands for Gazoo Racing. Like, not Kazoo, but Gazoo with a G. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the first time I heard it, I'm like, Kazoo Racing? What? Like uh, Fred Flintstone. But, yeah, so Gazoo Racing. So these anything with a GR in a Toyota lineup is sort of like the more performance focused version of whatever the car is either as a standalone or like it's the performance version of the car that exists so these are the performance versions of three different cars there's a supra the corolla and a gr86 but they're not just that they're also like special editions of those performance trims right? right is that the fairest way to say it i think yeah and there's a lot of partnership in that too like in the 86 they partnered with subaru if you remember the brz so this is a sharing of platforms the bodies are theirs but and obviously the toyota specialty things that make toyota special and then subaru does theirs so there's a partnership and, and with the super they partner with bmw Mm -hmm. So as we are lovingly call in our industry, the clown shoe, <laughs> so the Z cars, <laughs> but the, there's some, they're really limited production. I mean, if you're looking at like the GR Corolla, they're going to build a, a 1600 of the circuit editions, which are really cool. And they only come in two colors that blue flame, which almost looks like a grabber blue from the seventies, Boss Rio twos, uh, or white ice white. And then if you're looking at, um, the, like the GR86, they're only making 860, a little play off of that. Right. And I did learn, I said it wrong in my car review. It's not true. No, it's true. A no, true. -ano. And my son says, he's an anime guy yes. that you say every single letter in Japanese. So I have true learned something new. But true. No, oh, guess, true I no. T -R -U -E -N -O. It means thunder. And oh yeah. True. A no, yeah. it means thunder. Yes. The GR86 Thunder Edition. I guess Thunder Edition just sounds somehow too aggressive. Like that should yeah, be a dodge. It's all that, <laughs> yeah, really. But it's all, it's anime, this AE86. And and that's what it's based off of. And then the GR Supra, which is my personal favorite, 45 years of that. Because originally it came out as the Celica Supra. 
Mm-hmm. I think that was like 79. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to make 900 of those. Those are going to sell quick. Um, and I think that because they only come in Mekon blast and I had to ask again, yes. Mekon means orange in Japanese or mm-hmm. absolute zero, which is white, yeah. uh, 900 units of those. Those are all going to sell super, super quick. And it's there's really, a lot of competitors. These aren't a lot of units. Like these are really small production runs. And a lot of this is that, you know, these are fun, sporty cars that enthusiasts go for in the first place. And then you've added yep. a level of exclusivity by making these really small production runs. So you're going to have like, you already have, you know, you have a Supra, you've got the GR Supra, but yours is one of only 900 units. And, and I love the orange that the orange in that color, that car looked just pops. beautiful. It pops and it's got like these matte black wheels. It's got a little black side graphic. There's yeah. no way that you can look at this and just go, oh yeah, it's another Toyota. Like it looks no way. like something special. Yeah, it is something special. I mean, they got Michelin Pilot Sport tires. And that, that, those are really sticky summer tires. You're not going to mm-hmm. drive this through the winter. Right. But I will tell you, the zero to sixty time in the Super is three point nine seconds with the manual. That's booking. That three is fast. seven with the automatic. I mean, we're talking about a small car. We're not talking about. It's not a Porsche. It's not right. all these other fast cars. This is a car that is full gas. Anyone can drive it. It's really cool looking, which I think is important. And, and, you know, they've done a nice job. I sat in those seats and I went, oh, this, I this could work. This it's really work. nice. And they haven't given us pricing on anything so far. They say pricing is coming out because these are not these are all coming out like fall, spring. Like over the course of this year, we're going to actually be able to buy these and then pricing will come out. But you can bet your super is probably not going to be as expensive as your average Porsche. So you'll probably be able to get this. True. <laughs> as a, a Porsche slightly... owner, I will tell you that's true. Yeah, <laughs> Porsche be... knows how to nickel and dime people to death. Exactly. You know? There's so no these... discounts for us journalists that's for right sure. so these will be a little bit more affordable and what i liked i the uh the super looks great but i kind of like that corolla the circuit edition it's because cool. yeah and i love the blue flame color i like bright colors in little sporty cars like i feel like you shouldn't just be able to buy it in like white or boring yeah. no i agree like it, or if, red yeah you know like, what I mean? arrest in, me red <laughs> yes arrest me red buy it in something like pop like a color that just draws attention why else would you buy those like you want it to look like beautiful and attention getting, but the roof is carbon fiber and it, on the it, Corolla only. Yeah. Yes. On the Corolla only, it has a carbon fiber roof and it was the neatest, like carbin fiber can sort of look a little bit different ex- depending on how they treat it. it has Unless you thing. drive a race car, you'll see that they're all made that way. They're so all- it's formed carbon, carbon fiber rather than the weave that you see. Yeah. You usually see a weave that's glossy. Right. This is not, this is formed. This is, this is what we'd make race cars out of. And, and also looks, the wing is also uh, carbon fiber. And it looks just fantastic. Cause like you said, you're always used to seeing carbon fibers, this really glossy, sleek, shiny thing. And it's not, and it kind of looks, yeah. it, it like if you it's look sportier. at it at first, you're going to think when you first glance at it, that it's just a matte black roof. Like you don't even register that it's carbon fiber. And then you give it a closer look and it's like, wait a minute, there's a little bit more going on here. So there's I, a lot more going on and four seats with two child safety seats in back, which I found hysterical with all this, the privacy glass on that is just so perfect for that. The buyer, the buyer is a young person who has, you know, typically Obviously, we know there's going to be other buyers, but right. typically the one buyer is going to be someone who's young, maybe out of college, maybe with a kid, their buddies. They want to go places. You got four seats. You can put two kids in back and it, it, you could make it your daily driver without question. And it's kind of crazy to me that you couldn't like this is a GR Corolla. This is a limited edition in a crazy color with carbon fiber. Sell. But I'm going to put the kids in the back and bring them, you know, to the I school would. drop off, which I think is brilliant. Like I want to see some mom show up at the school carpool yeah. line and like I drop it off their kids in this. That would be I love cars that let you like, I can channel my inner mom or my inner sports car enthusiast in the same I car. I did that. You did My that? kids were little. My kids are now in their 30s. But yep. when they were younger, I had a 2000 Audi S4. I bought it brand new. At the time, Audi was running in all this European racing and these huge Audi logos across the side of the car. So I'd ordered a black car because <laughs> that was the color I wanted. Big silver Audi circles on the side and an aftermarket exhaust. I used to drop them off at this Catholic school. It was hysterical. That's I come perfect. running, blah, 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 pop, 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 pop. Okay, get out. And they so come they out in their even, little uniforms. They don't even need to look to see when you come to pick them up. It's like, wait, yep, Lauren's oh, here. We can hear here. her coming. Yeah. She's arrived. Yeah. That's yeah, fantastic. Exactly. It was fun. I They all knew me. And then I had an, uh, an orange, solar orange, which is this bright, bright in your yeah. face orange. Audi TTS uh, that my son took. He went to a different school for high school. And one day his little mini Cooper broke down. So he took my car and he, I got the call from the school saying, uh, yeah, your son was just like doing burnouts in the parking lot. I'm like, 
I'm like, really? You're an idiot. My car is freaking orange. <laughs> Duh. You know? Like, he, like no one was going to notice him doing that. It flies so under the radar. They'd never look out yeah. the window and be like, mm. It was the principal who caught him. He's looking out his window at the keys to a burnout. I'm like, dumb, dumb. You know? Dumb, dumb. Uh, that's in the GR86 also has a really cool color. So they have the halo, which is the white, but they call it, it's a red, but it's called track bread and it's like lowercase b capital r i saw that clever i'm like aren't you cute no one's gonna know that unless you happen to look at it like written down but bread uh which i thought was kind of again it's kind of fun i feel like you have to have fun with cars like this yeah and it's it's majorly set up with performance packages it's got the sacks shocks brembo brakes brembo brakes on a on a gr86 is crazy Crazy. it's crazy but you know if if you're going to autocross it put it on a road course maybe take some high performance driving schools and all the gr line all of them come with a one-year package for nasa which is a racing series you can look the and you also get a day school so you have someone riding with you saying hey you know this is what you need to do i used to run driving schools at watkins Glen from 1986 to 2001 so the driving ambitions performance driving school so we've got a lot of racers that currently race today well, I think anytime you have an opportunity to to do something where they're going to teach you how to drive these cars, like everybody thinks it. you can drive. You're like, I, I'm a good driver. I can drive this. You can, but if you can get the opportunity for someone who really knows what they're doing to show you how to drive, my gosh, you have no idea how much you don't know until someone shows you. And then you right. sit there in the car and you think, I just did everything wrong on the track. And then you learn a little bit and then you do another lap. And each lap you learn a little bit more. And I even find... Like we do so many of these drives, Lauren, where they let you have some, they'll either require someone to ride with you on some of these drive programs, or they'll Mm -hmm. give you the option to have someone ride with you. I always take the driver with me. I always say, if you have an instructor, because every single one teaches me something different. So they, they all sort of key into different things. Like Nicole, do this a little better. Nicole, do that a little better. So collectively I have, but you learn things. You're getting better. But see, for me, I won't ride with another racer. So we have this rule. Yeah. You never ride with another racer because you try to scare the crap out of them. (laughs) Oh, see, I'm not a racer so, so i'm not trying to scare yeah, the crap so, out of anybody like I, i'll run with bill auberlin at bmw and yep. he literally pushes it to the limit because he goes well you can handle it yeah but i'm also in the passenger seat and i don't have control <laughs> and it makes you want to throw and up and you're freaking so, out and then when he's in the passenger seat i try to not follow that rule of see if i can scare the crap out of him because he's a professional he's one of the most famous racers ever especially with bmw so i'm like yeah you know i'm i'm good thanks. so be careful I, who you ride along with you be careful yes. who's in the driver's seat with you yes Hey, wait, did we just drive by a bakery? Okay, not actually a bakery, but Lauren, you're from Buffalo, New York, and Mm -hmm. you're kind of known for buffalo wings. Uh, Yes, I'm actually a judge for the Chicken Wing Festival. Wait, there's a chicken, you have a festival, a chicken wing festival? Labor Day weekend, I will always be home because I've been judging for like 10 years and we get to go around to the backside of all the tents with our little judging pass. I actually have them on my desk here and it says that you're a chicken wing judge. You show them the pass and then you tell them how many people are in your group. I'm usually a head judge. My daughter's always with me, except for last year because she was pregnant. She didn't want to get sick. Oh my God. I can't imagine eating hot wings like that pregnant. Oh gosh. Pregnant. Well, I don't do the hot wings. There is a hot wing group. The okay. super hot wings, like the ones that, like that torture mouth, Wait, they sit in a, a separate room. There's enough different. There's enough people there with wings that you can actually break down to hot wings or not hot wings. They're different categories. Yeah. So the, we had a guy <laughs> who had ghost pepper wings. Of course, I would never try that. Those all go. All the super hot wings go to a separate category for hot wings. We just go through all the wings. So I have tried everything from regular mild medium hot which i used to in college we'd get the hottest we could and then we'd have a pitcher of beer and see how much we could i don't oh even drink gosh. beer anymore but um but now we've got weird flavors like hawaiian flavor and dry rubs which i don't like dry rubs why don't you wings. like dry rubs you want it to be sticky fingers because it's why? not because it's not about the chicken wing the chicken wing actually came from a uh, anchor bar and there's one in our airport it's it's like a tourist trap now so it would be like you know Going to Boston and going to where all the tourists go, you know? Right. Going to Cheers because you think you've gone to a Boston bar and it's like, no, you went to a tourist <laughs> trap. <laughs> you went to a tourist trap and yep. somebody's making a lot of money off you. Yes. Uh, it's true with New York too. You go to all the tourists. Oh, we're going to go to, you know, Times Square. Okay. So if you, what happened was they, somebody walked in late and they said, hey, listen, we're out, we're out of food. All we've got left is like some wings left from chicken. And they said, we'll take it. Let me, let me do something with it. So they fried them which you can fry a shoe when it would taste good. You could Pretty fry much. anything. Yes. And then you take him and you toss him into hot sauce. And then he served him with blue cheese and celery. And that is the original way. They're fried. 
And let me tell you, the fat content's about as much as a full cheese and pepperoni pizza, which would be an excellent <laughs> pizza here. In no, town. let me hold on to the idea that there's chicken in there so it's healthy. Just don't. Just, yes, I'm going there's with that. chicken and there's celery chicken, to make so you feel You've got a vegetable. You've got chicken. Totally healthy. But go ahead. <laughs> so so now the flavors have gone to these crazy places. Um my favorite restaurant is no longer with us. They closed during COVID, but there's a uh, place called Sullivan's. It's still my favorite, favorite place. They have what's called beef on whack ring, uh, wings. Now, you probably don't know what a beef on whack is. Unless I have you've no been idea. Buffalo. I have no idea. So basically, it's a Kaiser roll. They dip it into butter, another low cal, low carb. Mm-hmm. Lo- totally dip it into cal. butter, put salt crystals on it, and caraway seeds. Then you put sliced roast beef, a little bit of the au jus, and then fresh horseradish. And that is a beef on wax sandwich. So they Ooh. took that concept and turned it into the wing. So they fry the wing and then they toss it in a horseradish sauce with chunks of a little salt, like coarse salt, caraway seeds. And then they serve it with blue cheese and celery. And I'm telling, I don't get, I'm not into blue cheese, but those are my favorite wings. Those they are good. so freaking good because you get like the salty and the caraway pop. And then you get the fried chicken. It's like, oh, but. Regular wings is a lot of great places. Um, so the I, two that everyone always I've talks about. I even had a about, It's it's uh, Anchor Bar. What's the other one? I've just forgotten. There's two like touristy ones. Anchor oh, Bar no. and um, Anchor Bar and uh, Duff's. Duff's. So if you, I know those Duff's are both- is a college dive. You go there with you go there. There's no pay. There's nothing but like paper boats. You know, you order and they they give you the paper <laughs> boats. I mean, they're like it's like you, so. If you came to town, I would not take you there. You would if not you take said, me hey, there. Let's, I used to take you to Brennan's Bowery Bar because they had jumbo wings, but Ooh. I would take you to, oh, they were so good. They were the best. But there's a million other places to get wings. Bocce Pizza in this area is But if you had to pick between famous. the they two. They have great wings. If you had to pick between the two tourist ones, Anchor Bar or Duff's, you're forced to. These are the Anchor only Bar. T- Anchor Bar. Anchor. Why do you like Anchor Bar better? Because they've w- woken up to, they want a franchise and they have to offer more flavors. And when I'm stuck in the airport, Buffalo airport, there's a delayed flight. I just go over and pick up some wings. That makes sense. But, and they're good. They're not great. The key to a good wing is it's got to be crispy. Yes. Not like, not over the top. If it's swimming in sauce, it's Buffalo wild wings, which is a total BS takeoff. Oh, I always Their wings are terrible. Them. Their Somebody wings was, are terrible. I had never been to one and I was on a road trip with someone and it was like at the rest area and we were just trying to, you know, blast. It was like, let's stop just long enough to grab something at this junkety rest area. Let's go and have that. And she's like, oh, I love it here. And I'm like, I've never been. Oh, it's amazing. I was like, I am so Really? Just... Buffalo wild wings at a rest area? Wow. It was like, yeah, it was, well, it was just off the, it was like, you could get off the rest area and like, and take an exit into the town. And it was just like right there. So it was like two seconds yeah. to get off the highway if but you don't it, know wings you go there it was it, super it's the same disappointing thing as, as anywhere else oh i know and this was someone and, from connecticut so i feel like she's kind of new york no adjacent but she had no idea no no i was, no, I was no. all excited and literally you just got like a pile of wings like somewhere under the sauce <clears throat> excuse me there were wings but it was just this sloppy messy pot. i was so disappointed i've never been back well never you should do a ever. road trip because you're not that far from me come no. here labor day weekend i will get you in as a guest judge for the chicken wing <gasps> festival i get to judge i'm telling you oh yeah i've had i've brought friends before um so because i can add them in and the drew serza is the wing king they do it's hysterical they do dives in huge like kitty pools yeah. full of blue cheese <laughs> and you, you put you put on goggles and you pull your hair back, you put your head into like a net and they literally put your face into a bowl of a big pool of blue cheese to see how many wings you can pull out. I will not do that. I was going to ask a judge, if you've they done force it. us to be on stage and watch it. And we're all like, Ugh, you know? so people must come out of there. Just, oh, my gosh, you're going to have to go home and people, immediately take a shower because it's, it's Labor Day. It's still hot. And you're covered with blue yeah. cheese dressing. It's how disgusting. many wings do people pull out? Like, do they get one oh, or two half or a dozen th- to win? Like, Oh, so it's like the and kind they have of a wing gross... eating contest. So we have that guy who wins all the time at Coney Island. Yeah, that eats the hot dogs at like a ridiculous Bruh. rate of hot dog. They eat wings. You had to see them strip them off the bone. It's like you're not even tasting it. You're just choking it down. You're just inhaling it. You no, yell I... at your kids if they ate that way. You know. <laughs> now, I, I'd like to think that I I like any one food enough to just do any, uh, like a contest. But then I watch people how they eat those, and they literally are just like inhaling them Ugh. by the gulp. And I think if I yeah. did that, with, are they hot wings that they eat? Is it a hot wing eating contest? Um, or just I think wing? you can get them any way you want. Um, if you're really going to eat a lot, then you go with the mild because it has no. Um, there's no spice to it. The mediums are my favorite. Hot is like, you really like toasty, but here we do extra hot with hot sauce. There used to be a place around the corner called Sal's and he would always ask you, are you sure you want them this hot? And we'd be like, oh yeah, because we were in college and we were stupid. Yeah. 
and then we have a big pitcher of beer and, and you and you're like these are great and they're crying and tears you know? streaming down your yeah. eyes your nose is yeah. running so what's yeah, your but favorite if you're here you gotta try sponge candy too that's what's sponge thing. candy what's that sponge that's another candy buffalo is thing sugar that is spun and you can they don't make it during the summer because it just solidifies but they make it from like september to like maybe april they spin up the candy i'll try to bring you some next time i see you okay oh, i'll see you this week i'll bring you yes some. that's right so they spin it up and it gets all like full of air bubbles and then they dip it into light uh, milk chocolate or dark chocolate and then there's a place out in batavia new york that does orange chocolate and mint chocolate and all that peanut butter chocolate and all that crazy stuff so basically what you're telling me is i need to come to buffalo new york while i break every single rule of my diet except i am still having healthy chicken Yes. Well, if you want to call it that. <laughs> but I love my chicken wings. I, you know, I'm not, I just got off a, a diet myself. I'm kind of slowly maintaining. But if you put chicken wings in front of me, the grocery store is sell them. Everybody sells wings. Everybody. No. We and have wings done here, right. but they're, they're, some of them are done okay, but a lot of them are done. I'm in New Hampshire. We're not wing. Like, yeah, they kind of sort of have good wings, but we don't yeah, have wings you like you have them right. They got to be crispy. They got to have that, that right amount. So when you cook them, you have to cook them the right temperature. And then you toss them in this huge bucket full of either mild, medium, hot, or whatever sauce. Now I'm going to be going to get wings for lunch because you've made me want wings. Lauren, Sorry. thank you so much for, for being my co-host this episode. Tell everyone real, real quick where they can find you. It's at Car Coach Reports on YouTube, and we appreciate all the subscribers as we are growing very quickly. Any form of social media, literally any form, is at Lauren Fix, L-A-U-R-E-N-F-I-X. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to The Road Reflected. To follow more of Nicole Wakeland's adventures, head on over to NicoleWakeland.com. There you'll find links to her social media from TikTok to Twitter, as well as her work across a wide range of media outlets. Until next time, keep it shiny side up.